people that look for kavod, Rabbi Ephraim, Shichye, he described it perfectly. I know a few people, more than a few, that not only they look for kavod, they live for kavod. Like it's like, you know, like you ever see like people that are like on, uh, you know, they, they can't breathe and they have like masks on them and like every few like seconds, like, <gasps> and you see the whole machine move, like the whole house moves with the machine because they need the next breath. That's people with kavod. They need kavod mamash to live, to, to breathe. This is a person that's the most miserable person in the world. He's worse than a beggar. Because even a beggar has an end to how much he wants. A beggar, he gets used to not getting much. As soon as he gets his meal for the day, he's happy. He's got it. Okay, I got $5 for the day. I'm going to eat for today. Okay, I'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Beggar is not saving money for a rainy day. Beggar is just living for the day. But a person that seeks kavod, he'll never have enough. He's like, mamash, worse than a beggar. He's like, please, please, give me some kavod. Please, 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 give me some kavod. Give me some honor. I don't have anything. What do you mean? You have 18 buildings. Yes, please. Did you see the buildings? It's my building. Did you see them? Did you like them? Did you go inside? I built the buildings. Did you know? Oh, oh, Hashem, I can breathe. He saw, he saw my buildings. He saw my buildings, Baruch Hashem. He saw my buildings. Oh, he's gone now. He left. Who's going to see my buildings now? And he starts going back in. Please, please. I need kavod. Please. I, I, I'm dying here. I'm dying here. Why? You, sir, you have a nice car. Oh, you saw my car? You saw my car? It's a nice one, right? I bought it. I paid cash. 250000 I paid cash. I, pay, I worked for the money, and I paid for it. Okay, it's a nice cash. Relax, relax buddy. It's a nice car. I got to go. I got stuff to do. Oh, who, who, who's going who's gonna to talk to me now? Please, please. And he goes back to begging again. Over and over and over again. Oh, you saw my wife? She's good looking, right? She's 20 years younger than me. Yeah, yeah, I found her in Tibet. Yeah, what do you think? Nice, right? Yeah. And he's constantly looking for attention, constantly looking for someone to acknowledge that he did something in the world. This is worse than any beggar you've ever seen in your life. Because there's no end. If you are doing a mitzvah and you want to let people know, you should know you're no different than the person I just impersonated. Oh, did, did you see what I did? Did you see the, the, the shiur I organized? I did it. That shiur, yeah, 500 people, I did it. It's me. Oh, nobody told you it was me. Yeah, it was me. I did it. Who else was doing the community? Who else cares like me? Who else, he tells you, who else cares about the community? I love the Jewish people. I love the Jewish people. Hashem, I love Hashem. He starts singing to you. Okay, okay, buddy. You did the fire. I got stuff to do. What? 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 Who's going to acknowledge that I did the shoe? He starts going around to people. Guys, you, you came to the shoe. Right? Do you like the shoe? You guys like the shoe? You came to the shoe. Did you, I, you know, I organized the shoe. I organized the shoe. You, who do you think cares about Ami Say like me? Who brought the food? I brought the food. The donuts? I went to the donut place and I made sure it's Kemach Yashan. For you guys, for Ami Israel. I saw I made sure it's Kemach Yashan to make sure that Ami Israel eats uh, kosher. Because I love you guys. I bought it though. I went there, I, with my car. I went all the way to the store at 6 o'clock in the morning for you. And he tells people all the things that he did. And this mitzvah he tells them. And that mitzvah he tells them. And the whole thing he tells people all the mitzvah that he did in his life from the time he was born until today. Miserable person. We'll never have enough. In Shemaim, instead of making Hashem happy, he's making him cry. He says, look at my son, spend eternity on nothing. He's doing a mitzvah already. Baruch Hashem, he's doing a mitzvah. But instead of keeping it in a safe, quiet, what is he doing? He's publicizing it to the whole world that he did it. He's publicizing it to the whole world that he donated, and he arranged this, and he did this, and he's publicizing on the internet. And some people, they go to Beknesset just to do selfies. You ever see those people? They do a selfie. Oh, this is me with tefillin. Why do you have a phone in your hand with tefillin at the same time? Do you know it's an avirah from the Torah? You have tefillin, you're not even allowed to think about anything other than Torah. But you, no, no, I'm taking a selfie. Why? I want to show Ami I'm laying tefillin. So what? What do you want, a cookie? 
You're laying tefillin. What do you want? You want a cookie? You want everybody to say, Yeah, well, Baruch Hashem. You're a righteous Jew. Like, what do you want? You want Moshe Rabbeinu is proud of you. What do you want exactly? You're making a sin. You're publicizing it too. This Rabotai is something that a person that is looking for kavod, he doesn't think about this. Why? He's too busy thinking about kavod. He's too busy letting everybody know he put tefillin on. He's too busy letting everybody know he went to the nets at 5 o'clock in the morning. He didn't really go to nets at 5 o'clock in the morning because he woke up at 4, studied for 45 minutes, and then went to Beknesset. No, no, he was out hanging out with the guys until 4.30, and he figured, you know what, let me just go to Beknesset. He didn't sleep the whole night before. It's not that he's such a tzaddik that he woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning and went to Beknesset. He just he went hung, he hung out the whole night. He's like, ah, you know, I'm still awake. Let me, let me like, pretend I'm a tzaddik and go to Beknesset at 5 to tell everybody on Instagram that I went to Beknesset at 5 o'clock in the morning. All of his mitzvot are tainted. All of his mitzvot. It's like having the most beautiful diamond bracelet used as a nose ring for the pig. That's what it is. Million dollars in diamonds and gold, but you put it around a pig's nose, is disgusting. That's a mitzvah that you publicize for the sake of kavod. This is what the Chachamim were literally running away from. Running away from. To such an extent that when someone gave them kavod, they had physical reactions to this. They cringed. Some of them even passed out. Now I know that we're not at the level, at least I'm not, to pass out if you tell me Chazaku Baruch. But the reality is that this is showing us what we're supposed to at least strive for. At the very least, we should we should stop looking for it. No one's expecting anyone to start passing out the next time next time somebody gives you a compliment. And if you do, you're probably not normal. You should go to the hospital. The reality is, but at least stop looking for it. Stop telling everybody about your mitzvot or the good things you did. It's not good for you. It's not good for your neshama. You're wasting. You're wasting all of the schar, all of the mitzvot that you have. <laughs>